The world is digitizing faster than I could have ever dreamed of. With this, we have seen the effects from a financial perspective to have their own set of problems. It started with the auto loan, making cars more affordable for all, but leading to many car buyers buying more car than they can afford. Then off to the credit card, where people could no longer feel the spending of money, leading to what? Mass amounts of debt. Now we have the tap or insert, whatever you do with your card, fill out a screen and you are on your way. This new digital transaction is creating a process where the rush of everyday life is starting to be taken advantage of. Today, I want to discuss the tipping culture that we are seeing today and how you can navigate it without breaking the bank for everyday goods. Let's jump in. Welcome to the Financial Mirror. Financial Mirror. Where future success is reflected in our knowledge of fixing the one thing we can control ourselves. First off, thank you for joining me today on the Financial Mirror as we continue to improve the one thing you can control yourself. If this is the first time you are joining in, don't forget to hit that subscribe on YouTube to be notified of all the new episodes as they release. If you are listening to this on a podcast platform of your choice, go ahead and hit the five-star review. And a if you're on Apple or Spotify, leave a written comment on there. Uh, regardless of which platform you are on, go ahead and hit that share and share this with all of your friends and family members because we want to get every single person as knowledgeable as we can around personal finances because we know the more intelligent we are with our personal finances and our friends and family's personal finances, the better our lives can be. So if you, if this is the first time you've joined in, like this doesn't mean anything to you, but if this is, if you're a long time listener or a long time subscriber to the channel, uh, you will notice that the hairstyles differ. Actually, if you're watching this on YouTube, you probably see the thumbnail. I need to update some, some thumbnails, right? Uh, but you, you can see the, the hair is gone, right? Cut the hair off. So I was starting to bald on the front and I told myself a long time ago, I said, you know what? If, if it's, if it's time to let it go, you got to let it go. Like if younger you would say, man, that dude should really let his hair go. Uh, it was time, but it, it didn't affect me much. Uh, cause I was, I'm so, I'm so tall, right. That uh, most people never could see it, but the more and more that I have been on video calls, the more and more I can see it. And <laughs> it's it's not as impressive but um i found this little little meme but i thought it was funny uh, what if all bald and bearded people really just have haircuts that are upside down and i thought it was great but i i told my wife you know i've got if i'm gonna cut the hair you know i gotta keep the beard out so that's where we're at so we're keeping the beard out hair is cut uh it took a lot of effort to to do it took a lot of encouragement and peer pressure and a lot of people just saying just do it already and it finally happened. But uh, all in all, uh, not too bad. Not too bad so far. But uh, in addition, the other new news is that if you know me at all, you know I love sports. And you know that I'm from Alabama. We don't have hockey. Well, I did get to go to my first hockey game. It was a minor league game. Um, but it's a minor league game for uh, a minor league team for the Dallas Stars. So I really like hockey. I I said, man, I feel like I missed out on the opportunity to play hockey growing up because it looked like a very, very fun sport to play. Uh, it was very enjoyable to watch. My wife enjoyed watching it. Uh, so now I'm a Dallas Stars fan. I had to pick a team. And so I was like, you know what, if I can, if I'm, if I like this, this, this minor league team for the, you know, this, this farm team for the Dallas stars, might as well just be a Dallas stars fan. I looked it up. Dallas stars was doing pretty good this year. And I said, man, what a great year, uh, to start watching hockey. So there I am. I uh, have been to a hockey game. I have a new sports, uh, a new sport to watch and a new sports team, the Dallas stars. So, uh, look at that. But today is not about sports. It's not about balding. It's not about anything. Um, but it is about tipping and it's a long tradition in the United States. I mean, years of years of history around tipping in the United States. And I say this because it isn't recognized in all countries around the world. So if you go around the world, 
uh, you're not going to always find a, a country. You're not going to always visit a country that that you tip. So, uh, you know, I found this little graphic, and I'll just read off a couple of them for people that are listening on the podcast. But uh, it's kind of broken down into four sections. First off, prepare to tip everywhere, being U.S., Canada, Mexico, uh, UAE, things like that. Um, another category is if you eat, you tip, unless there's a service charge included. And this is like Austria, Brazil, uh, South Africa, Turkey, Ireland, Netherlands, those type. And another one is if you're really impressed, you should tip, but tips are generally not expected. This is like the Australia's, the Finland's, the Germany's, the Greece's, the UK's, Taiwan, Singapore, South Korea, Italy. Like, I mean, pretty much a lot of countries fall into that category. If you're impressed, sure, tip, but not really expected, right? Not really expected. Uh, versus like the, the, that first group prepare to tip everywhere, the US and Canada and Egypt and Mexico and Qatar, all those are kind of like you should be tipping, right? So across the world, oh, and then the fourth one, tip and risk insulting a nation uh, was the last one is Argentina, France, Japan, uh, Oman, and Yemen. So those are kind of like don't don't tip there because you, you may offend someone, right? But how accurate is this graphic? I don't know. But what I am saying is that um, you know, if you're visiting these countries, please look up what they're what they're, you know, what they're how they tip and and because obviously I'm talking about tipping today because the United States has shifted in how we tip. <laughs> so these could easily change how they how they do it as a as a as a country, uh, what's expected in their cultural uh dynamics it changes. So what you're seeing on the screen today may be accurate or maybe not be, but it still gives you a general idea of how tipping is done around the world. Now, today I want to talk specifically about the United States. We have shifted to this new like tipping culture, right? This new tipping culture. It used to be just a tip jar that was just sitting there and it has drastically changed in how we do it now, right? How we do it now has drastically changed. So I kind of want to talk about what is this tipping culture? Where did it all like sort of stem from? Why, like, where did that shift start to happen? And what you can or should uh, do about it so that you don't break break the bank, right? Now, before I jump into this, I do want to say this. I, I there's a lot of people in the service industry that that may listen to this, that may watch this, and my my idea here is to not you know take anybody off. I'm not here to make anyone mad, but we there's tipping does stem from something, right? Like there's, there's history behind why tips exist, um, and why that culture exists and what tipping is for. And, and and I want to, I want to clear all that out, but I'm not here to make people mad. I'm not here to give, give this side of the story. I'm just looking at it from the facts. There's, there's actual facts that go with tipping. And I want to, I want to throw those out there and I'm, and at the end, you're going to hear me say, and I'll say it right here at the beginning. I'm not going to tell you not to tip. That's not what I'm going to tell you, but I am going to tell you to, to navigate it differently, right? I am going to tell you to, to start to think about things differently. So if you work in the service industry, uh, once again, don't be mad at me. I'm not here to, not here to make you upset with me. I'm not here to, to tell people to stop tipping you. That's not going to be the outcome of this video, but I do want to educate people. I do want to educate people because this, that we are seeing a shift in this tipping culture and I don't want this to, to completely tip over, uh, and, and break people's finances because of uh, not being, you know, as informed about where this all come from. So let's jump in. What is the tipping culture? So during the 1950s, 10% of a bill was common to tip. Okay. We, we've seen that 1950s. We all can look back. Things were different. By the 1970s and 80s, it had kind of jumped to about 15%. All right. So 20 years later, 20, 30 years later, it jumped up 5%. Now, in 2023, people are typically tipping anywhere from 15 to 25 percent. And you would probably say, well, that's like 40 years. If we would jump 5 percent in 20 years, shouldn't we have jumped another 10 percent, 5 percent in 40 years? Well, maybe. Um, but it's really not about tipping. So, so it's really about why do we tip, right? Why do we tip? So the reason for tipping is that 
in certain positions in the United States, and I'm not going to speak for all countries because I don't know what uh, what their their laws and regulations are around this, but in the United States, there is this thing uh, that are called tipped employees or tip waged employees or whatever you want to see it as, and those positions pay less money, right? Like their minimum wage is less, and so tips are intended to make up the difference. Hopefully, if you didn't know that, that you you know that now. And the federal the federal tipped minimum wage is two dollars and thirteen cents. And you're probably like mind blown if you didn't know that there is a minimum. There's two minimum wages out there. You have a minimum wage for employees, and you have a minimum wage for tipped employees. Meaning their job is specifically tied to tips. Okay. Specifically, tied. like, like if you don't tip them, you are single handedly affecting what what their minimum wage is. Right. Because the whole idea behind tipped wage employees is to to start to 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 make up the difference in to get them to the normal minimum wage or even higher in some cases. Right. And uh, jobs in that category are made like, or, or things like uh, uh, waiters, which 61% of their money comes from tips. Bartenders, where 47% of their money comes from tips. Pizza or delivery drivers, where 36% of their money comes from tips. Chauffeurs, where 28%, and hairstylists and barbers, where 24% of their money comes from tips. Now, I say all this to say this. This is a business model where... A business offloads cost to the customer, to the consumer, to you, and this helps keep prices low, right? If they're not having to pay as much for employees, for for staff, they can mark down other prices, right? They can keep your, your hamburger cheaper. They can keep your pizza cheaper. They can keep your steak dinner cheaper. Like They can keep other prices cheaper because they're not having to pay for staff. Right. That's the whole idea behind this. If if it takes and, and this is a this is a huge problem, right? This is a huge problem because if I own a business and I have to pay my employees, let me give you a story. I have, I have a friend that runs a, a Mexican restaurant uh, in Virginia and he they were talking minimum wage changes, you know, there. And he said that if minimum wage got enacted, like a $15 minimum wage. We've, we've heard it. $15 minimum wage. If that got enacted over what this $2.13 federal tip minimum wage, right? Where all of a sudden $15 was the um, new minimum wage for, and now I'm questioning, is it Virginia? Anyways, it was a state, state north, northeast. But uh, if, if the Federal, if the if the federal minimum wage, or if, or if the excuse me, if the the state had to abide by the state's minimum wage versus that federal tip minimum wage, his he would lose staff members, right? Think about that. If they got fifteen dollar minimum wage instead of the two dollar and thirteen minimum wage, they would actually lose money. Isn't that nuts? That's totally nuts. Because if they got moved to the normal minimum wage, they no longer or a tipped position, meaning they it's not going to be as encouraged for tips. Now, if people still tip, that's awesome. But in the in, in all aspects, they will have to change how much money. Like they they will physically change how much money they make by moving to a fifteen dollar minimum wage. It's totally nuts. But I'm saying all this because there are two minimum wages out there. There's the federally tipped minimum wage, and then there's the normal minimum wage. So. Some require employees to pay tipped employees the full minimum wage before tips. Some don't. and But the whole point is to keep your costs low. That's the whole point. That's where tipping came from. Okay, That's the reason for it. Um, and so what that did was it, it encouraged your, your waiter or your wait staff to all of a sudden give you the best service possible because their income relied on it. That's that's the correlation. It wasn't just this like like just this act of 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 
necessity, right? Like people wanted, it created this culture where people would just, or the idea was people would just want to do good for you. They would want to give you the best customer service that you could have ever imagined because they needed a tip because they work for them. Now, the problem with it now is that everyone is asking for a tip. Everyone's asking for a tip. So, so I pulled this up as a state minimum wage guide. This is as of 2022, but you can see, you can see where um, minimum wages are kind of like all over the place, right? They're kind of all over the place. Um, some people still like so the federal there is there's a federal minimum wage which is 725. Some states still operate at 725. Others uh, have bumped up theirs due to you know uh, increased cost or whatever the case may be. Uh, but some states do have a higher minimum wage for the state. Now, all of this is to just say that the wage that someone receives plays a huge role in should you be tipping or not, right? Should you be tipping or not? But the tips started with people that were working in tipped minimum wage jobs or tipped employees, and you were helping make up the difference, keeping costs low for you. Okay, so now let's talk about this tipping culture. This tipping culture. You've seen it. You've seen I know you've seen it. Everyone is I've heard so many people talking about it, which is kind of what led me to this because I've talked about it. And it's just changed. It's changed. Like, like think about it. And I, I if you're watching this on a video, you know, you know this picture very well. <laughs> you know it very well. And it has mixed emotions, right? It has mixed feelings about this image so if you're if you're listening on a podcast what this image is is uh just envision this don't close your eyes if you're driving but but envision this you're paying at the register the person at the register turns the tablet the little pad around you know and says it's going to ask you a few questions and you and just sign and go through the prompts or whatever whatever they say right whatever they say is something like that they turn it around up on the screen are these big old numbers and they'll say something like uh, tip and it'll say good, better, best or some type of you know word that describes what each of these are. And it creates this emotional connection to, to the screen and it may say like 22, 24 and 30 percent or something. Remember, remember. This is this is your tip, but it's 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 this fast transaction. Like it's very quick. Like you just paid your car, they flip the screen around, you tap, 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 you sign, you do no receipt or whatever, and boom, you're on your way. But when they turn that around, you're staring at the person, you kind of you could feel pressured. You could feel bad if you don't click one, right? So you 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 sort of like, oh, well, I don't want to choose the lowest because then I just look like a, you know, like a mean person. So I'm going to choose the middle one because I don't really want to, I don't really want to tip right now for this. Like, I mean, it's like a $1 cup of coffee, but you know, it's asking me and and I guess I need to choose 28% instead of 30 because the 24 makes me look like a, a jerk. And so I just choose 28%. And, and now you pay, you know, the, the dollar 28 for your $1 coffee. And then they turn around and they fill up your cup and they hand it to you. And that person also makes $17 an hour or $15 an hour or whatever the case may be. And it, it, it's mind blowing. It's mind blowing. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to get into the, to the details of that, but, but I just want you to envision that envision that scenario. Right. And you, you know, your, your $3 cup of coffee that is brewed in a, in a, in mass amounts and you turn around you fill a cup and you hand it off. And this person is not a tipped minimum wage employee. Um, it changes things. It changes things or, or I've been in a drive through and they've stuck the little tablet out the window, like not tablet, but the little like handheld thing out the window. And it's asking in the drive through which is not a tip, tip minimum wage position is asking for 25% tip on my, on my order. Right? Like that's what it's asking for. Um, and in the, it kind of, and, and like I said, I'm not saying all this to be mean. It's not what I'm saying, but what I'm saying is that we are in a high inflation economy. 
the cost of goods are going up drastically. I mean, drastically, like you're noticing it. I'm noticing it. Everyone's noticing it. The cost of goods are going up. What that what that means is that these businesses are making more money off of you as a consumer instead of paying instead of paying their employees more if if the idea is just for for you to tip them more right uh, and maybe I didn't say that the best the cost of goods are going up the business if if the cost of goods are around them they should do some type of like market adjustment for their employees right and the employees wages should go up if they're going to do a market adjustment if this is a job that that can't be easily replaced let's let's first attack that one like like minimum wage jobs are minimum wage because they're easily replaced like i can replace you to do that job with anyone that you know it's very it's a very low skill set to to replace that position right that's that's normally how minimum wage is determined once again that's not to be mean that's just to say what it is right it's just a simple fact of why minimum wage exists now, you take that position and you now are asking for tips because now the tips are the market adjustment for the employee. And that's kind of how it works. And once again, this all can come across so mean, especially when people are working in these positions, but it, it really is what it is. And, and I encourage you that if that's where, if that's where you're at, like that's not where you have to stay. And that's what I would, that's what I would tell you. But in a high inflation economy, this can hurt. This can hurt because people are being asked to tip on everything and this could lead you to spending way more than you ever expected on like everyday items right on everyday items and it's all for this like tipping culture so where did it come from well it came during the pandemic there was a pressure on tipping um and and to be to be fair it was it was very needed so people like people were providing you a service people were providing like to me to me, that's kind of that's kind of the the question that I ask, and we'll get this then. But like that service of, I did like like a lot of families didn't want to go out and go to the grocery store for the fear of COVID. Um, they didn't want to go and and get you know spread their germs to all these other people. So what did they do? They started hiring like Uber Eats and Grubhub and DoorDash and all these companies just exploded because. People that were willing to go out and get these things were delivering them to people. Well, that's a service, right? You don't want to go out, so you're you're requesting someone to bring it to you. That is a service. That is a service that you could do, but you ask someone to do for you, right? I could cut my hair, which I did, or when I had hair, I was getting a haircut, and that's a service. Like I should tip that person because I could do it. But I can't do it as good as they do. So I go out and I get a service for that. Like I, I pay for that, right? But that's that's sort of how this all started. And it just kind of never stopped. These companies figured that if the average tip back then was like 30%, they figured that if, if you were getting 30% for delivery, why not also charge it in store as well? So they started adding it to these like Square and Clover and Toast. Like you'll see like they're the they're the digital registers that you're seeing now, but those are the brands. And and this is now integrating to the system and it's making it easier to get percentages in front of customers, right? You'll see those percentages, those big numbers, and you just click one, right? But currently, the share of transactions offered um, is 75% of all transactions running through those systems are being asked for a tip. And that's nuts. That's nuts. 75% of all those transactions, these are not tipped minimum wage employees that are behind these systems. Um, but the digital, the, before, let's think back, um, and I'll show you this at the end. Actually, let's, let's just wait till the end for that piece. But it's nuts. But the beauty is the quickness, the screen. It encourages, just press the button. Press the button, answer the questions, right? We tap the card or we insert it or whatever. That's quick. Boom, 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 done. And then we get the tablet, we turn it around and boom, you're presented with these options. You got a whole line of people waiting behind you. You're looking at the person in the face. You're pressured. You, you feel uncomfortable. You just pick one, go with it. Then you're like, well, now I just want to get away from this thing. So I hit no receipt, even though I might need the receipt. Like, I mean, like it's, it's, it's a very quick transaction. It's a very emotionally driven. And all of a sudden you are in a position that you are uncomfortable and you go with something, right? You just go with something and then you're done. And it's fast and it's painless. And you walk away and you're like, whoa. And you just left a 24% tip 
on a one dollar cup of coffee that is just poured from a drip uh dispenser <laughs> and and i'm like i said they got you they got you they got us I, i've done it too right i've done it too but that it's 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 just crazy to think about that this is where we are now it's crazy to think about but the current stats are shocking and and i wanted to bring those up but um how often people tip in 2023 so uh, frequency, you know, 41% of people always tip, 35 often tip, and 19% report tipping at least sometimes. How much, you ask? Well, 16% is kind of the average um, that people are tipping, and they're tipping um, about 11 to 15% more when they tip digitally, like on one of those like square toast clover uh, digital machines. Um, but 73% of people are tipping at least 11% higher when tipping digital. That's nuts. Before and after the pandemic, uh, 32% tip more now than before the pandemic, right? And then this is this is a, a chart that I wanted to bring up uh, for how do people feel Thir- when they when they they feel about tipping when they you know you get this this machine in front of you, 31% feel pressured. 26% feel overwhelmed. 23% feel oh, um, um, embarrassed. And the other 23% feel guilty. All four of these emotions drive the reason that they're tipping 11% higher. They're tipping at least 11% higher because when you feel pressured, overwhelmed, embarrassed, and guilty, you your emotions, you, they, that's totally an emotional decision. Like Even though you know for a fact, like, I should not be given a seven dollar tip for this takeout order. Like the like when you're pressured, overwhelmed, embarrassed, and guilty, and standing in front of a register with a line behind you, and you're staring at this person that um, I don't even know where these tips go. I it, hey, if you're listening to this episode, and if you could, besides if I upset you, I apologize for upsetting you. But if you would leave me a comment in this video, leave me a comment on the podcast. Let me know. How are these tips distributed between employees? If I have an employee and they're standing behind a register and I give a tip and they're the only person that I interact with, the only person that is providing me a service, which is taking my order and making sure that it's right, how how do how do I know they get my tip? If I give them a tip on that on that pad, how do I know that they get it? If you would just tell me, I'm curious. Um, is this, is this like this thing where all the tips come into one and then they just distribute it out to all the employees. So now somebody that may have actually given me terrible service is getting some of the tip for the person that gave me great service. Just please tell me how these tips work. I just want to know. I just want to know because I really don't, I have no idea. I absolutely have no idea. Maybe I should ask the next person how, how do these work? Um, but I'm curious. I need to maybe I need to start asking people that. I need to start asking where do these tips go. I don't know. I'll figure that out. But if you if you work in that industry, if you work and you get that little and you do the little tablet flip thing, let me know how those tips are distributed. I'm very curious. Very curious. But uh, back to this, uh, Americans tip nearly 15 percent more when tapping digital. This is just uh, you know 11 at least 11 percent higher uh, than they used to. So. What can you do? What should you do? As we wrap this up, what should you do? Well, uh, oh, I, I added a couple more here for, for for slides, but I do want people to know that services people tip for the most uh, are like sit-down restaurants, food delivery drivers, fast casual restaurants, salons, bars, coffee shops, food trucks, pickup, take, like all these things like people tend to tip for. Uh, a couple where people are like super adamant about they don't feel they should have to leave a tip or food trucks, fast casual restaurants, picking up takeout food, coffee shops, sit down restaurants, food delivery drivers, bars, like like it, list goes on. What you should do is figure out first off, you, you know, like what should you tip or should you not tip? The first thing you should do is figure out um, the places that you're going. You should understand where federally, you know, tipped minimum wage employees work. Like you should understand that because if you know those, you should absolutely a thousand percent. Don't ever question it. Tip hundred percent. Don't question it. I don't care. Like, and when I say that, I mean, 
so for those service industries that are that are tipped minimum wage employees, no less than 10% for terrible service. I mean, the worst service you ever got, do not do less than 10%. 15 to 18% for good service. For good service, like you should be getting that. Like, and, and you, so it's a window, right? And if you get absolutely phenomenal, I mean, best service you've ever gotten, and you would highly recommend this person at this restaurant, you know, this establishment, 20 up. Higher than 20, absolutely, you should be doing it, okay? But that's for those federally tipped minimum wage employees, right? Now, so what about when you are, you? it's not one of those positions. These are minimum wage jobs or even slightly, like people are now like, like Alabama, for instance, 725 minimum wage. And it's been 725 for as long as I can remember, right? Uh, I can't remember what it was. I think it was 675 when, when I was growing up, but. 725 is the minimum wage, right? 725. If if most people are if they're making minimum wage, I'm not saying you shouldn't tip. Um but but most people now 725 is the minimum wage. Most people are paying them $10. There nobody's really getting paid minimum wage a lot anymore. Uh but there are some. There are some out there, so uh apologize if that is you, but like I apologize for, for, for misquoting if that is you because, but a lot of people are, uh, are starting to bump those up just a little bit from that, that original minimum wage, federal minimum wage. And I'm talking federal, I'm not talking about your state, federal minimum wage is 725. And I'm kind of saying that a lot of people are starting to bump that up away from the federal. So should you tip or should you not? First off, do you order at a table? If you do 15% is customary, but like I said, no less than 10 for, Terrible service, 15 to 18 for good and higher than 20 for exceptional. Uh, if you don't, if you order at a counter, but you're served at a table, this is like the fast casual where you go up to the counter and you order, but they bring your food out and all that kind of stuff. They still may say, is there anything else I can get you? Things like that. Uh, you should tip. You should tip that same same amount, uh, uh, type of amount, right? Um, or, or some type of structure like that. Create a structure for yourself. Now, if you order at a counter... You wait and seat yourself like a fast food restaurant. Um, there's not really a need to tip. These employees get paid by the hour at a minimum wage amount. But if it if you if you saw like something that's really stood out, yeah, like like be thankful for it. Like give them a tip for it. Um, if it's a local place and you want to just contribute to your local uh, community. Yeah, give them a tip, help them grow, right? But it's not customary to tip at a place where you order at a counter and you wait and seat yourself. You pick up your food at the counter, like all they do is grab your food, like like the the, the cooking the food is a job. You're a cook, like you're just doing your job. If if your restaurant wouldn't exist if you didn't have cooks, so you're not tipping the cook unless you know the cook gave you the best hamburger ever, and then go give them a cash tip. I don't know, but. We've got to get out of that mindset that you're not, you're not like the food being cooked is their job and they're getting paid for their job. So if they do their job above and beyond, sure, final, give them a tip. But if they're just doing their job to get you your food, all I'm saying is that it's not expected, but it, I guess it's appreciated. And, and I would tell you to do that. But if this is takeout food, uh, tips are not expected, but they're appreciated. I would say tips are, 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 if it's like takeout, like you're in a drive through, um, think about it. I, I, I don't really know how to say it. Think about it. I, I just, it's hard for me to battle with. I, I, cause we, we talked to the history. We talked to the, where we are now. Just think about it. Think about, think about it. Um, and, and decide how you want to handle it. So in my head, I have structure. I'm not going to go through how I do it. Cause then, then it starts to influence how other people think. Uh, but you should understand like what, what you do, uh, as an individual, but just think about it. But once again, I'm wrapping this up by telling you that the idea here is to, this is a really blurry image. I apologize. But the, the idea here is that think hard about it, but don't let this new tipping culture start ripping you off. Okay. Don't let it start ripping you off. If you're going to tip, Keep it reasonable and don't feel pressured to do it. All right. Don't feel pressured. So if you, if you're like, man, like I, I wasn't going to tip here, then don't, 
right? I don't feel pressure to do it because the screen gets turned around on you. Stick to stick to what you're going to do and then do it, right? If you're walking into an establishment and you're you're like this is about to be great service or not great service, um then then just do it. Just tip. So, I gave you some tipping statistics here. Uh waiters, you know, restaurant delivery, restaurant takeout, bartender, baristas, cab drivers. Just a couple of little ideas and it's, I know it's very hard to see, but um you know, like it, it's just it's just an idea, but you can look these up. There's tons out there, but just look at them and see what you think. Um, but it, this has been a little bit longer episode than I am that I usually do. But I will tell you this: it's a big it's a big topic. It really is a big topic. But uh, I hope this was helpful. I hope that this sort of gave you something to think about. Like I said, I'm not telling people not to tip, and I'm not telling I'm telling people just to think about it. Think about what they're going to do. Uh, think about how they're going to do it. So. Uh, one thing I will say is that I do offer financial coaching services. So if you are ready to take control of your finances, ensure you're on the right path toward your financial goals, go over to thefinancialmirror.org and hit book now. Schedule your free consultation today. And if you do want to give an extra dose of support to the stream, head over to thefinancialmirror.org forward slash shop, pick you up some awesome financial mirror gear. Uh, like I said, if you are listening on a podcast platform of your choice, go ahead and leave a five-star review and a written comment. Those do go a long ways in helping getting this information out to more and more listeners. If you're on if you're on YouTube, subscribe to the channel. If you're on Facebook, like and share the video. If you're on YouTube, share the video. Uh, but all in all, it's all about growing the community and just giving us more and more to think about. And and as I wrap this up, like I started off with, this is not to tell people or, dis, or, or, or start to encourage people not to tip um, the people that offer us, you know, uh, services across across the country, right? across the world even. But the idea is just to start thinking about it. Don't get drug into this tipping culture that starts to change people's minds about, about what actually a tip is meant for, right? Because we don't want to get into the, we don't want to turn this culture into a, into a, a place where tips are expected and that changes the service that is provided. That's, that's the outcome here. That's where I'm trying to, that's what I'm trying to talk about. So I appreciate everyone tuning in. Appreciate everyone listening. Until next next week, continue improving the one thing you can control yourself. Peace. Well, that wraps up today's Financial Mirror. Join us next week as we continue to work on ourselves, change our mentality, and to commit to achieving the success we always envisioned. Regardless of your platform, help us grow as a community. Please like, subscribe, and share with the people in your lives.